right, good morning. <laughs> November 16, 2021, annual joint meeting of the State Board of Education Committee on School Finance Permanent School Fund and the School Land Board will now come to order. Pursuant to Section 31.015 of the Texas Natural Resources Code, I'm chairing this meeting in the Commissioner's absence as Chief Clerk of the General Land Office. As the Commissioner is away on state business. Should the Commissioner return prior to the conclusion of the meeting, I will relinquish the chair to him. November 16, 2021 annual joint meeting of the State Board of Education Committee on School Finance and the School Land Board is being held in person at 1700 North Congress Avenue, Stephen F. Austin Building, and by video conference calls authorized under Texas Government Code Section 551.125. Access to the meeting by members of the public was published in advance in the Texas Register in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act. All that being said, we will now move to the agenda. The first uh, items are the SLB call to order and roll call. So let me, let me run through this and see I am here on behalf of Commissioner Bush. Uh, Mr. Bersiaga? Present. Check the others. Mr. Neal? I believe he is muted, muted, but I see him on there. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. We've got you. Okay. Okay. Uh, Mr. Williams? No, I don't see him. Don't see him. And Mr. Rohrman? I don't see him either. Do you know if they're trying to join Corey? Because they were, him. no sir, they were on previously on the previous meeting. So uh, looks like we will have a vote to excuse any absent SLB members. I would uh, that'll be a vote for the from the SLB. So I will make a motion to excuse those absent members. No second. Second. Mr. Neal, are you approve that vote? I'm, yeah, I'm in favor. Thank you, sir. Motion is made, seconded, and carries unanimously. Um, next, we will move on to the SBO Committee on School Finance, Permanent School Fund. Uh, Dr. Ellis, would you like to carry that out for the roll call? Sure, and I'm going to hand this over to Mr. Maynard in just a second. But before I do that, I just want to say as an introductory that I appreciate both staff, Commissioner Bush, Chair Maynard, and the work that they've done on the PSO Corporation um, to bring this to where we're at today. Um, and that being said, I'm going to turn it over to Chair Maynard. Thank you, Dr. Ellis. And uh, so the meeting of the Committee on School Finance, Permanent School Fund, State Board of Education will come to order. That meeting concurrently with the School Land Board, and at this time, we'll call roll. And uh, uh, we have Vice Chair Lawrence Allen is here. Lawrence Allen? Uh, do we have present? Or, yeah, but uh, Member Pat Hart. Uh, State Board of Education Chair uh, Kevin Ellis. I am here. And Member Marisa Perez Diaz. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, we are not required by statute actually to uh, to excuse our members. Of the statute just says we just have to have a majority, and so we'll we'll uh, dispense with any sort of uh, excusing. So. All right. The next item uh, is just the statutory directive. The purpose of the meeting is very. Very straightforward, section 32.061 of the Natural Resources Code uh, requires both boards to ho hold an annual joint meeting. Uh, and the purpose of that is just to discuss overall allocation of the assets and the investment uh, in the PSF. So that is what we're here to do. And we'll kick that off with uh, Rusty Martin, Chief Investment Officer from the General Land Office. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you also, Chairman Ellis, Chairman Maynard. Vice Chairman, nice to have you with us today. Um, you should have a presentation. Um, this, if it looks familiar to you, it's very similar to what I presented to you last year. 
Um, starting with uh, page two of the report, I'm going to talk about the uh, asset types and the target weightings that we employ here. Um, there are three sectors that we target, and as you know, we, we do 100% private markets, real assets, investments only. The first sector we target is energy, minerals, and other real assets. For all practical purposes, this is an energy allocation. Our target is 31% of total net asset value. This allocation primarily targets oil and natural gas investments in the upstream and oil field services sectors. However, we also target various renewable energy, green fuels, and battery storage investments in what we call a rapidly involving energy transition sector. This allocation is also going to be diversified by strategy and sector. I will point out the 31% target has changed since last year. Last year, our target for energy was 35%. And we've reduced that exposure to energy in order to reduce the overall exposure to the portfolio of the volatility that's been occurring in the energy market, certainly over the past couple of years, but um, especially over the past year. So we have reduced that target from 35% to 31%. We left the real estate exposure at 33%. So what we did was we took the reduction in energy and moved it to the infrastructure section. So that now is, has a 36% NAV target. And as you know, our infrastructure allocation primarily targets really long live assets that provide essential services. Um, for example, tow roads and bridges, airports, seaports, power plants, rail facilities, and midstream oil and natural gas assets, such as pipelines and all the associated processing, storage, and transportation facilities associated with those projects. We also diversify by sector and strategy within the infrastructure space. Uh, real estate, as I said, we've left unchanged at 33% of the total NAV. And that, that uh, sector targets a collection of commercial real estate assets. It's diversified across the main real estate sectors, which are office, multifamily, hotel, retail, and industrial. Um, we have a focus on niche opportunities that may arise within the main sectors. For example, senior living or workforce housing opportunities within the multifamily sector. This allocation is also diversified by strategy and sector. And we'll generally pursue a target mix of 25% core, which are very low risk assets, and 75% non-core assets. Uh, such as value add or opportunistic investments. Turning to page three of the report, you can see our actual asset allocations. At the end of June of uh, 2021, energy was at 36.57% versus a target of 31%. Infrastructure was at 35.49% versus a target of 36%. Real estate was at 27.95% versus a target of 33%. Um, before I move on to the next page, I would like to point out um, some return information for you. Uh, at June 30, um, the gross return on the portfolio without cash was 16.26%. The net return was 13.98%. That's a one-year return. The five-year return was 959 gross, 754 net, and the 10-year return was 1246 gross, 10.09 net. Turning to page four, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. Um, this is our procedures that we typically use for the school land board to determine how much, if any, to release from the real estate special fund account to the available school fund or the state uh, board of education for investment in the permanent school fund. Um, this process happens every two years and every even numbered year. Um, we basically target 6% of the trailing 16 quarter average market value of the portfolio, including the cash. 
when we make a determination about recommending to the board how much to release. If you look at page five of the report, you can see a history of the releases since 2002. Um, the most important ones, the ones that, that I want to point out in, in 2021, well, there was a release of $600 million from the RESPA to the available school fund. 300 million of that was, was from the State Board of Education, which was released to the RESPA, and then we, the, we then passed that through to the available school fund. So that 600 million for tw fiscal year 2021 was actually 300 million from school land board and 300 million from SBOE. And then for fiscal year 22 and 23, you can see that um, the amounts that we're going to release are 415 million during fiscal year 22 to the available school fund and 460 million in fiscal year 23 to the available school fund. That is the end of my presentation, but I'm happy to answer any questions that any of you may have. Thank you. Thank you, Rusty. Any uh, questions from any of the members of the board? I'm going to reserve my questions to the end after, after both presentations are, are completed, Mr. Chairman. All right, any other questions? Hearing none, we will move on to the presentation from SBOE, uh, Holland Timmons, Chief Investment Officer. Thank you. Uh, good morning. It is a, a pleasure to be here. If you will uh, move down two pages. Uh, given the uh, Senate Bill 1232, we always find it interesting to look at the total fund asset allocation. Uh, that, that combines both the state board assets and the school land board assets. And of course, that's what goes in the annual report. So this is a, a presentation that uh, has, shows both the state board asset and the school land board assets. And these numbers are preliminary, uh, but these are what we expect to see at the uh, 831 annual report. I think the most interesting thing, if we aggregate uh, state board and school land board, uh, we see a, a $55 billion portfolio that is 33% public equities, 29% private markets. That's made up of real estate, energy, private equity, infrastructure. So that's 29% private markets. And that makes 62% uh, of the portfolio is either in public equities or private markets. And then the balance of the portfolio or the total fund is made up of the mineral ownership, uh, fixed income portfolios, absolute return and cash. Uh, when we look at the returns from the state board portion, the one year numbers through August 31st, is 22.97%, three-year numbers net, these are all net, 11.26, and five years, 10.49. On the next page, show the distributions uh, from the state board. This is the, uh, when the state board sets the percentage distribution and you can see the dramatic increase in the most recent year uh, and biennium with the uh, biennial distribution expected to be about three and a half billion, which compared to uh, two and a half billion in the prior biennium. So uh, almost a, a billion dollars additional for the current biennium. And certainly with COVID that this was an ideal time to uh, provide the extra billion dollars. Next page, we're talking a little bit about the, the liquid account, which has been extremely successful. Uh, went through an allocation, asset allocation process, and the uh, fund is at the target allocations. So this was an implementation scheduled process that uh, is at target. Uh, 
there were some concerns going in really related to the process of the flows back and forth. And I think at our side, concerns over the frequency of, of uh, withdrawals from the liquid account. And so you'll see that, that there is a high cash allocation at the current board meeting, the state board will be considering reducing that cash allocation substantially and in investing uh, that money into other assets. I think uh, the reason that uh, there's comfort doing this now that we've uh, fully determined the process for uh, sending money back and forth and the frequency, as well as the expectations over the coming year for withdrawals, uh, uh, we are really comfortable with a much lower allocation. So that will, uh, is expected to further increase the return on the portfolio. The next page, uh, the, the current balance that the GLO has deposited with us is 4.18 billion. The current market value of those assets is 4.37 billion. So there's uh, excess unrealized gains of 187 million. And then during the uh, time period since we've been managing the money, 156 million have gone to the state board. So the, the total excess value on the liquid account is 343 million. And this has been a tremendous success. And I, I would really like to praise our staff for the implementation process. Uh, the liquid account portfolios effectively doubled the number of transactions that are being executed in any time period, also doubled the, the number of, doubled the accounting work. So there's been a dramatic increase uh, on the, the workload of, of staff to implement these uh, 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 trades and uh, I'm, I'm extremely proud of our staff and the work they've done over this time period and feel like the uh, program has been a tremendous success with the uh, 343 million excess value. That's the end of my presentation. We'll be happy to take any questions. Alan, uh, and this will be a question for you and you and the rest of both, and, and I think that, and I don't know if anybody's watching, if anybody is, is that, you know, I think this is a really important question. Uh, you know, one of the, the driving concerns, I suppose, is how we would maybe couch that, that, uh, what, that, that was the impetus for creating this joint meeting was uh, that there was a concern that that there might be, if there wasn't communication between the two boards, if there might be a, an overlap in certain investments, uh, that there might be, that we might become overweight in certain things. Um, and and, uh, and if, if you and Rusty could both maybe kind of address that, because I think that when, when, uh, well, once you got into this thing and you looked at looked at your managers, if you know how much overlap that you had with managers, how much overlap we actually have with investments, and particularly in the area of real estate, you know, and, and, and how those two real estate portfolios, they're both real estate portfolios, but they're actually very different one from the other. If y'all could just kind of uh, address that and, and uh, because those were the original concerns that led to us having this meeting. There is really very little overlap between the two programs. As, as you indicated, they're, they're run very differently. So, uh, the last time uh, that we met on this, we, we, we visit about once a year to look at the overlap. There was one uh, significant uh, name in the real estate portfolio of overlap, but uh, that's one out of a very large portfolio. So it, it's, it's a very limited and minor issue. Hey, Mr. Chairman, I would add to that, again, this is Rusty Martin, uh, Chief Investment Officer at General Land Office. I would add to that um, 
that we, we only invest in private markets um, transactions. We don't do any publicly traded transactions. So um, just, just right off the bat, we're, we're not doing the same things, um, particularly if you look at the energy and infrastructure sectors. Um, there's no overlap whatsoever in those two sectors. On the real estate side, as, as Holland mentioned, there's um, a very, very minimal overlap. Um, but even in the real estate sector, for the most part, we're doing different things. Our focus is, is more on um, very niche-focused opportunities, um, and more along the uh, value-add and opportunistic spaces. Um, so even, even on the real estate side, um, on paper, it looks like there would be a lot of overlap because of the, uh, the dollar amount of exposure, but in reality, that is not the case at all. We're, for all practical purposes, we're very, what we're doing is very complementary to what you guys are doing in the overall portfolio. And I, I think, I think that, that was a point that this, this really needs to be made. And, uh, you know, once we got into this dialogue, I think that we just kind of discovered that, you know, some of those concerns that had, had, had come forward, uh, you know, I think, well, at least, at least, at least the dialogue has sort of allayed some of those, those concerns. And, and, uh, Rusty and Holland, let me just say that, uh, just in terms of, uh, you know, the work that you guys have done on the, on the, on that liquid fund and working together, uh, we really appreciate the teamwork there and, and you guys working together. And uh, I think you guys make a great team. We appreciate both of you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I've got a question for, uh, I think probably for Holland. Um, Holland, you mentioned the, the lower allocation of cash in the liquid fund that we'll take up at this meeting. But there was also the schedule from the original um, allocations into the liquid account from the school land board and the timing of getting them into a, a more diversified portfolio, which I believe we're able to do ahead of schedule. Can you speak a little bit to the schedule of the diversification of the fund to the liquid account overall from the beginning? That is correct. There was, uh, I think, com some concern about uh, dumping a lot of money into equities very rapidly and, and the risks of that. So uh, as, as we went through the process with the board and consultant on setting the asset allocation. One of the determinations was to use a, a two-year phase in to get all the assets fully invested. And af after we, uh, uh, after the September board meeting, uh, things were moving very well. The dialogue and, and process was going well. So uh, we and the board were comfortable speeding up that process and according to the process the final implementation would have been at the end of the first quarter of, of 22 but we uh, did complete it uh, at, at the end of October any other questions comments from the board Doesn't look like it, so we'll move on to the final item, which is uh, an update on implementation of Senate Bill 1232. So I will uh, uh, start with this item. Uh, we have established a task force to deal with the transition made up of functional experts and have asked John Grubeman to lead the process. So uh, John will, will present uh, an abbreviated uh, version of the Senate Bill 1232 uh, process requirements. John. Thanks, Holland. Uh, members appreciate uh, your time this morning and um, I will promise not to go through every word on each slide, but uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to interrupt me. Uh, I believe that uh, everyone is familiar with 1232 by now and uh, understands that the primary purpose of the, the bill and now the law was to allow the SBOE to create a spe uh, special purpose corporation and to delegate its authority 
to the corporation to manage the assets of the permanent school fund. And along with that uh, is to uh, merge the um, GLO SLB assets into uh, a single pool with the TEA SBOE assets going forward under the, the um, um, management of this new board. Uh, as you can see in the first bullet point, the um, corporation uh, has nine members as specified in the, uh, the law, uh, five SBOE members, the land commissioner, and three appointees who have expertise in investments, one from the land commissioner and two from the governor's office. Uh, also, uh, there are provisions that, um, that deal with both TEA uh, and the S uh, SBOE and, and also with the SLB and GLO. Going forward, uh, the uh, SLB's investment authority in assets uh, will change, primarily being limited to uh, real property and mineral royalties. And then um, the uh, investments, and in, as I mentioned, in the real estate funds will transfer to the corporation uh, primarily during the course of uh, calendar year 2023. Um, and finally, the corporation will uh, establish a minimum distribution rate for each biennium and, and uh, will, similar to the, uh, the current SBOE, will uh, balance the needs of current and future uh, students in the setting that distribution rate. I believe that uh, everyone is familiar that uh, as part of the, the General Appropriations Act from the, the session, uh, there was a uh, provision added that, um, that the um, TEA and GLO should each submit a plan that would describe the steps required to implement the, uh, the bill and also uh, the, the costs expected to be um, uh, associated with the implementation. This uh, plan was uh, due by 9-1 of 21, and uh, TEA and GLO decided uh, to submit a plan jointly. Uh, the plan did uh, include the sections that you see listed below, talking about the creation of the corporation, which is primarily the, the legal uh, formation, which the SBOE will be addressing uh, this week at their meeting, uh, addressed the initial uh, board actions uh, that would likely be occurring uh, mostly in uh, calendar year 2022, and then address the uh, transfer of assets and the core functions of the PSF uh, to the corporation, which would be mostly a 2023 calendar year exercise. Uh, and then last, it talked about establishing administrative operations at the corporation. This is something that will begin in uh, calendar year 22 and will uh, continue on uh, in well into 23 and, and likely uh, uh, beyond. Um, the plan was, uh, uh, was submitted on uh, 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 prior to September 1st and was approved by the LBB in October. Um, here we have a, a, a rough outline of the timeline of events. And so we are uh, really at this upper left hand corner right now, the creation of the corporation uh, and, and the appointment of the SBOE uh, uh, board members. This is, uh, as I mentioned, will be addressed at this week's uh, SBOE meeting. And then the other actions are largely in line with what I just described from the the LBB plan and the governance or the 2022 actions establishing management and early, impl early implementation actions, again, all through calendar year 2022. Uh, the um, earliest date that uh, management, uh, the duties and management and employees and assets can transfer would be 1-1 of 23. Uh, and, um, and as we mentioned, uh, clearly that will take some time in particular with the private market assets, such as that are managed by the SLB and GLO and, and those similar assets at the, the SBOE TEA portion, those um, require a fair amount of um, work and will be expected to take place over the course of the year and some perhaps uh, uh, taking longer. Uh, I will note that uh, the in that upper right corner, you can see that the the SLB along with the SBOE, 
TEA and the corporation will agree upon a date on which these uh, uh, um, post 1123 of which the uh, powers and employees transfer. No questions, we'll move on to the next page, please. And so here we outlined uh, just really kind of the next steps. And, and some of these, as I mentioned, on the SVOE box, the top three are uh, those four bullet points will be uh, addressed this week. Uh, following that, we expect that the, um, if the corporation is approved, then the paperwork, paperwork, paperwork excuse me, would be filed with the Secretary of State and the corporation would be formed uh, shortly thereafter. Uh, and then um, that would appoint effectively six of the nine um, members. Uh, and then we would uh, look for the, the commissioner uh, and the governor's office to, uh, uh, to make their appointments uh, uh, following or at the point that the corporate board deems it uh, appropriate, they will um, uh, adopt their bylaws and the, then those must be approved by the SBOE. And then the establishing the policies and procedures, these are really the part of the initial activities that we described in those bullet points earlier. Uh, and then um, TEA and GLO uh, will be able, they do have capacity each under the, the law to uh, make transfers to the corporation of appropriated funds to um, uh, allow the corporation to operate during uh, this calendar, the uh, calendar year 22 and in uh, FY23 uh, until the, the new budget cycle is established. Um, and that concludes my presentation. Happy to address any questions. Thank you very much. Any questions from the board on the process? So, Chair Havens, uh, and just uh, so everybody understands, is that so the, the the certificate of formation is up for adoption this meeting, and then once we once we adopt that, and then once and once that is is filed with the Secretary of State, then the corporation is considered to be formed at that point. And so that's so we we think just as soon as we do that, then then we assume that if the corporation will be formed, you know, probably sometime in December. Okay, thank you. Well, if there's no other questions, that's the uh, final item on the agenda. I appreciate everybody's time and attendance here, both physically and virtually. So uh, that being said, the State Board of Education Committee on School Finance, Permanent School Fund, and SLB Annual Joint Meeting is hereby adjourned. Uh, Y'all. Mr. Havens, I do have one question. This is that uh, the, being that the school land board is, is, is hosting the virtual meeting, are you also providing virtual refreshments? We are. We are. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs>